Hey there, folks. I'm Mark, in affiliation with Spectrum Pulse. I don't know, it might seem like a normal week, but things are changing. And this, it's Billboard Breakdown. I, don't remember. I think I gotta come out and say it. There's a paradigm shift going on with the Hot 100 right now. Times are changing, and while I've written some of it off in the past as a bit of a trend, I'm still not quite sure. Not sure how sustainable any of these shifts are. The industry is certainly treating it like a trend. It's hard for me not to notice it, even if the chart activity from the outside seems relatively stable given the lack of album bombs. And yes, I know, we got a new number one, but truth be told, that's a story that should have happened months ago. The clunky billboard system that we had just took way too good goddamn long to get there. But you know what? Our top 10, let's get it out of the way now. Our new number one, Kill Bill by SZA, her first ever. It's important to highlight that while the Doja Cat remix likely drove the sales boost, a bit of the streaming recovery, it's still primarily credited to SZA alone, especially given the radio tracking. Kind of reminds me of how Levitating by Dua Lipa was credited on Billboard when it got its remix. Nevertheless, TDE and RCA played the Hot 100 better than I expected, even if in all our hearts this probably went to number one back last December instead of Christmas music dominating everything. But it was enough to crack over last Last Night by Morgan Wallen at number two, which dominates streaming and spent the week surging on the radio. But again, it lost on the margins. All this leaves Flowers by Miley Cyrus at number three. Radio has absolutely peaked. It's on the downswing on streaming, but the sales are still really strong. It might have a slower exit. That takes us to our new top 10 entry and one that did surprise me a little bit. A remix of Ice Spice's Princess Diana, now featuring Nicki Minaj at number four. We'll get into the song more later on, but with a big sales splash and streaming already in, it's going to be fascinating to see how quickly radio decides to get on board, if at all. But the bigger story here seems to be Ella Bella Solo by Ezra Bon Armando and Peso Pluma up big to number five. Pretty much on titanic streams alone because radio is not really touching this. Even if sales are better than you might expect, it bowled right past Creepin' by Metro Boom and 21 Savage in the weekend down at number six, although it's radio being in free fall probably had a lot more to do with that. As well as Calm Down by Rima and Selena Gomez at number seven, where the radio growth is still really there, but streaming really isn't. So again, it's a margins game. Then there's Die For You by The Weeknd and Ariana Grande at number 8. It had a mostly stable week on the radio, but it is also slipping. Then there's the expected fall off for Search and Rescue by Drake down to number 9. It is picking up radio faster than you might expect, but nowhere near enough to offset the streaming losses. And Boys a Liar Part 2 by Pink Pantheress and Ice Spice at number 10. Where despite some weight finally getting thrown behind the radio with the streaming losses, might be too little, too late. Now that naturally takes us to our losers and dropouts, and there are some big notable ones in the latter category, although, again, most of these we could have seen coming. Falling unfortunately short of any sort of year-end list territory for 2023, we have What He Didn't Do by Carly Pierce, but we did get a bunch of songs that handily clinched their year-end list spot with their exits. Golden Hour by Jake, Going Going Gone by Luke Combs, Cup It by Beyonce, and Until I Found You by Steven Sanchez. Now our losers, they're an interesting, albeit mixed bag. Some of them are more predictable, like Off the Debut, Happy by NF plummeting to 87, and Strike Holster by Lil Yachty at 83, or the continued losers like Fight the Feeling by Rod Wave at 55, or Five Leaf Clover by Luke Combs at 92. I mean, nothing all that personal with that one. There's lots of great Luke Combs in the charts right now. Let's hope they continue to do well. Then there's Heart Like a Truck by Lainey Wilson, naturally on its way out at 49. It got its year end spot locked up, a natural decline for All the Girls You Loved Before by Taylor Swift at 76, and Like Crazy by Jimin continuing to collapse at 85 given that the sales are evaporating because that's what happens. What did surprise me a little bit was Special by Lizzo and SZA just never getting going at 91, and BZRP Music Sessions Volume 53 by Bizarre Rap and Shakira at 93. It's probably just gonna miss year end list territory. It seems kind of borderline right now, although frankly, held up way better than I personally expected. But now onto our returns and gains. 
In the former category, it's just Heaven by Niall Horn at 94, given that the radio has gotten somewhat on board. But if you want to look at that paradigm shift I'm talking about, you have to take a look at our gains. Let's get the easy ones out of the way first. Never Felt So Alone by Labyrinth saw a nice, if expected, boost to 62 with some streaming pickup, likely thanks to Billie Eilish's presence on the song and people just finding out about it. Cupid by 5050 had even better streams, rising up to... 50 and peaches by jack black went just viral enough to rise off its debut to 56 but the story this week just like last week is the regional mexican surge predominantly helmed by peso pluma or grupo frontera for the former por las noches is up to 32 prc with net Cano rose to 35 amg with net Cano and gabito balesteros is up to 40 and el azul with junior h surged up the debut to 59 in the latter group bebe dame with forza Reg rose to 52 and K. Viovas with Karen Leon went to 82 and then there's El Gordo Tre El Mando by Chino Pacas rising to 75. Look folks I don't know how long any of this is gonna last. I've seen waves of music like this come and go from regional scenes but there does seem to be enough sustained traction that you have to take this seriously. Frankly I just wish I liked more of it or could tell more of it apart but again that's a journey I'm still working on. And trust me we are not done with regional Mexican music but before we get to a lot of it in our new arrivals, let's start off with number 100, It Matters to Her by Scotty McCreary. You think she don't notice what you're doing there Every little look, every single word, oh, it matters to her Okay, look, I can't get that annoyed that Scotty McCreary is trying to get late album singles from Same Truck, even though that album dropped in 2021, especially given how well Damn Straight performed last year. I also can't be that annoyed that he's not pushing The Waiter, my other favorite song on that album, but it's also very obviously a deep cut. It's not a single. But man, this is playing it safe in neo-traditional boyfriend country, even with all the welcome pedal steel. The hook melody is fine, but it's not special. McCreary isn't making the most out of his impressive voice. And while the writing is generally sweet for highlighting all the little things that you can do that will actually really matter to her, I don't know, the song feels very by the numbers to me. It's not bad. McCreary's got a very high floor when it comes to quality. I know I'm not in the target audience for this, but I'm not sure I'm ever going to seek it out. Doesn't feel special, all I'm saying. Number 99, DKC by Grupo Marca Registrada and Grupo Frontera. Yeah, we got a lot of regional Mexican music ahead, this time with Grupo Frontera bringing in another group that are new to me in the Hot 100. Now, one thing I do like with Grupo Frontera is that they bring in more accordion to anchor the melody and some warmer textures to bear. So while it still does sound kind of underproduced, overall it's a slightly more likable sound palette, especially for a yearning apology song trying to win this girl back. Not gonna say it's all that distinctive overall, but it's on the more likable side of the subgenre. Uh, this is good. I'm fine with it. Number 90, Igualito a mi apa by Fuerza Regida and Peso Pluma. <laughs> So yeah, this is much worse, at least to me. The acoustics are way closer to the front of the mix and they sound even more clipped and thin. The trumpets sound even more farty than usual. And the squawking vocal interplay just can't get around how there's no hook here, barely any structure. Now I do think there's a little bit more going on in the content. From what I was able to translate, this is about these guys trying to live up to their father's legacies, trying to do them proud, a bit more focus on family in the first verse. And then by the second verse, the focus is way more on luxury brands and flexing. I, I don't know, the execution of this does not work for me at all, but I feel like there are the seeds of something here that just feels fumbled. So, no, I don't care for it, but not as bad as it could be. Like number 88, Chanel by Becky G and Peso Pluma. <laughs> Cometimos errores que 
Not gonna lie, when I started seeing other Latin pop acts hop on toward the regional Mexican sound, my stomach sank. Sure, rising tide lifts all ships. From what I've been told, this is less a takeover of the sound, more just inviting a guest in to jam. But I've seen this before. I've seen acts hop on sounds like this for a moment and a check, and then they bounce. So even if I mostly like Becky G more than most, I wasn't sure I wanted her anywhere near this. I, I mean, I guess it forces there to be a bit more production and structure to the sound, but the acoustics are still painfully brittle, the horns are as farty as ever, they feel somehow more oppressively loud, and Becky G trying to bring in her brand of slick coolness? I mean, she doesn't have the exuberance to match the energy at all. Now, granted, the vibes of the song are sour all around. I guess that makes sense. A post-breakup track where they're both left hurt and confused and still thinking they might want each other back despite knowing better, especially as Peso Pluma got another girl who picked up all the same luxury brands and got dumped by her too. I mean, I do appreciate that there's a little bit more going on here, but man, I don't want to listen to it at all. I don't really think it works. Number 65, See You Again by Tyler the Creator featuring Caliucci's. I said I'm about to go to war And I don't know if I'm gonna see you again So, I guess we're just gonna make album cuts that should have been smashes six years ago in a chart and hits now? Oh, look, it's hard for me to complain about this one. See You Again was one of my favorite songs on Flower Boy back in 2017, and going back to it now... It's still absolutely great. I still don't really love Tyler's singing, but with a little bit less refinement and vocal processing against the richer pianos and twinkling synths as the strings, the horns, and the percussion punch up, there is this deeper well of emotion that feels very raw and sincere and really works for me, especially with Kali Uchis's sweeter delivery complimenting him really well. And one thing I really like here as well is how there's that wistful frustration at the core of the song, seeing someone you adore in your dreams never quite being able to connect more deeply. I mean, it's not my personal favorite from Flower Boy. That's either Garden Shed or Boredom. But you know what? The song is still great. It's worth the revisit. I'd be okay with this sticking around. Number 48, Daylight by David Kushner. You and I drink the poison from the same vine. Oh, I love it and I hate it at the same time. Hiding all of our sins from the daylight. Not gonna lie, when I saw this guy's last name, the first person I thought of was Jared Kushner, who had all sorts of connections to the ex-POS in chief. Thankfully, not the case. He's a TikTok influencer from Chicago, breakout EP in a single last year. This is the first song that has landed on the US charts. <laughs> and wow, someone really wants to be hosier. Down to getting Rob Kerwan to produce to get that haunted sound around his pianos and the heavier drums and that roiling sizzle of guitar on the final Hook, although I have no idea why he smothers all the vocals with fuzz on the choruses. So why do I like this significantly less? Well, kind of tough to pin down, but I think the root of it comes in the lyrics and the framing. Hat because a lot of the metaphors really do feel like diet hosier, but also the song is weirdly sexless. I mean, the obvious comparison is Take Me to Church, but that song and a lot of Hosier's catalog is really very horny, with a lot of the swampy swagger that's rooted in blues. Whereas when I discovered how much of Kushner's writing is heavily inspired by his Christian faith, I mean, it's kind of obvious, it sucks out a lot of that danger and comes across as very ponderous and clunky. And if you've heard enough Christian music in this lane, the formula begins to feel really obvious. I mean, no doubt this kid's got talent, but what he's choosing to make with it, yeah, I, I can't get behind this. In more ways than one. Number 15, Un X 100 TO by Grupo Frontera and Bad Bunny. Alright, not gonna lie, like with Becky G, I was kinda worried about this. Major label acts hopping on the sound, appropriating the sound, and then bouncing. But to be fair, Bad Bunny's always been very liberal with his cosigns and using his star power to elevate his peers. And Grupo Frontera is one of the regional Mexican acts in the scene that I like a little more, so. Maybe this could work? Okay, honestly, I still have a few issues with the acoustic mixing sounding a little bit canned. I don't know why they piled on so many effects for Bad Bunny's verse when he actually fits pretty well alongside Grupo Frontera on the hook, but there is more structure to this. The bass and the drum mixing feels a little bit sharper, and while I could wish for more vocal interplay, I actually think Bad Bunny's 
presence makes a little bit more sense in regional Mexican music and matching a lot of the broad melodrama they're going for. And that kind of works for the content as well, where they all have 1% of battery left on their phones, the ex has already moved on, and they're very much in their feelings about it. There is an emotional messiness to the framing that nevertheless, I'd say feels resonant. So yeah, I'm not totally sold, but this worked for me a lot more than I thought it would. Not my favorite in the subgenre that I've covered, but yeah, you know what? I like this. It's a good song. Check it out. Number 13, Chemical by Post Malone. So here's my hypothesis. After 12 Karat Toothache and the infamously troubled production behind the promo and behind the scenes on that album, I knew it was only a matter of time before Post Malone was back in earnest with new material. They weren't going to try to milk that many songs out of that album, even if in my opinion it was leaving money on the table to not push Wasting Angels with Kid Leroy. That one was a slam dunk, come on. Anyway, he got Louis Bell and Watt back behind the boards for this track, tacked on to Post Malone's first greatest hits album and I don't know, I get the feeling I should like this a fair bit more than I do. Going for more of a driving pop rock groove with the jingling live drums and the driving twinkle in the guitars and piano, it almost feels like someone was listening to a bit too much of the war on drugs, especially with how the reverb swells up throughout the song. That's a cool influence that I like. And the messy, drug-infused, back-and-forth relationship of the song could work very easily for either an ex or... Well, Post Malone's well-documented substance abuse issues. And thus, it's so damn frustrating that Post Malone spends so much of his delivery in his warbling upper register here. I don't get it. He's got so much power and richness in his lower range. It'd be closer to a lot of the Americana that he plainly idolizes. Just makes the song feel way more brittle than it needs to be. I have to hope he pitches it down live. But otherwise, this is a very good song. Seems very built for summer pop radio. Let's see if it has legs. Check it out. And finally, number four, Princess Diana by Ice Spice and Nicki Minaj. Trying to be low, he gon' hit on my grand. If he's small, he gon' act like a fan. If you bigger, they got your head gas. This is slow, so I give him a pass. Well, it was my favorite song on Ice Spice's EP before the remix. I've liked more Nicki Minaj verses as of recently. I had some hope it could be good. Well, okay, let me mention the things I liked about the original. The percussion is better balanced against the pluckier melody, with the bass having that sharper, tuneful whir to match the drill beat. And a faster tempo does help Ice Spice sound a little bit more invested, even if she is still pretty monotone in the content is not that special. So enter Nicki Minaj, who's actually a pretty good in contrast to Ice Spice in terms of her expressiveness, and well, I don't really think many of her punchlines are all that special either. I like her intensity, and she and Ice Spice have okay chemistry on the final hook, and how she noticeably wants to christen Ice Spice as a possible successor in the New York rap scene, that's a good touch. It reminds me a little of Whole Lot of Money, that collab that Nicki did with Bia two years ago, but Ice Spice has much better flow and better production, so yeah, you know what, I'll take this. It's decent. Go check it out. And that's our week. Bit of a broader spread than I expected, but I will say there's more quality here than I expected too. For the worst, yeah, Chanel by Becky G and Peso Pluma feels like a total misfire. And dishonorable mention, I was tempted to give it to Peso Pluma again, but it's going to Daylight by David Kushner because I frankly find it way more offensive to rip off Hosier this badly for a lot of Christian schlock. Now, best of the week, I'm sorry, it's got to go to See You Again by Tyler the Creator and Kali Uchis, but I'm giving a tie for honorable mention. Chemical by Post Malone and Unex 100 TO by Bad Bunny and Grupo Frontera. Nikki and Ice Spice, they actually were pretty close, but the collab energy between Grupo Frontera and Bad Bunny feels like a better vibe. I mean, it'll be fascinating to see how all of it falls out next week, or if Young Boy Never Broke Again manages to snag an album bomb, we will have to see. But until then, I'm Mark, you're watching Billboard Breakdown, affiliated with Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.